All right. Hey, everybody. <laughs> so, uh... Uh, I'm Gavin Goulden. I'm the uh, lead character artist at um, Insomniac Games. I just worked on Sunset Overdrive. Uh, before that, I was the lead on uh, Bioshock Infinite, and uh, I worked on Dead Rising and all kinds of stuff before that. Uh, I just kind of want to keep this one uh, casual and just show you my general workflow, uh, my scene setup, and uh, maybe talk about like a PBR. Uh, texturing material process. Um, so yeah, if you have questions, I'd rather uh, like just chat with people uh, than than just yell at a at a group of people. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I mean, first um, I really just uh, want to talk about the project itself. Uh, I it's not really common for me to be able to do uh, like a fantasy character and get to get to work on something that has like very high contrast uh, mixed materials, which is uh, really, uh, really important, really interesting to look at and uh, not, uh, not something a lot of people think about, but having like, you know, just like a, a cotton shirt or, or uh, you know, a regular jacket or something like that can be, uh, be kind of boring. So when you have like the uh, option to do like, you know, metal and leather and like cloth and all kinds of stuff, uh, uh, it gives like a, a better result. It gives me more of an excuse to uh, to mess with uh, Toolbag Two and and uh, try out my PBR chops. Um, so what I did at first, uh, pretty standard workflow. I uh, started with like a sculpt, baked it down, and actually got um, my textures through uh, Dedu, uh, which was kind of a first for me. I hadn't used it before. Uh, usually I do uh, hand painted stuff. But uh I'll give you like an example here. This is set up. But uh this would be like the gloss from Dedu. There's like a little bit of uh tweaking that I did. Um This would be like the uh the albedo. So uh Usually, like when people like you've probably seen like portfolios and like online, like for like older work, a lot of people will be uh, texturing metal would be like silver or like aluminum color, and uh, they just kind of add like a white speck onto that after. But like the way uh, things are going now is that usually you'll have uh, like metal textured as like a near black or like a dark gray. Uh, for like gold, it would be like a darker brown or something like that. Uh, and then you control like the reflected color and the power of the reflections in uh, in your renderer. Uh, in this case, is Toolbag, which is uh, uh, doing a great job of it. Uh, and in uh, Dedu, I don't know how many people have uh, used it or tried it, but uh, it's generally like um, a way to get like really quick results for your for your textures that spits out uh, very accurate. Uh, spec levels, gloss levels, and uh, albedo diffuse uh, uh, values into your uh, your textures, and really just paint like a, a mask. You define what uh, one material is uh, versus another, so you could have you know you define like what your leather is or like what your metal is, and uh, basically uh, just control like the finer details from there, and you end up generating out like flat uh, flat textures from there that can go into toolback. Uh, so I did that for like a few, few different materials here, and I've got like my uh, my skin, uh, which you can see here. I got like gloss, uh, my albedo map, which is actually made through uh, polypaint, um, uh, subdermis map, which would be uh, uh, when you have your translucency values, what's uh, what shows up. So rather than just being like a solid red, I've actually got like a definition for different like blood vessels, veins. Uh, and stuff like that uh, for a more accurate uh, uh, result for a subsurface. Uh, there'd be translucency, which is traditional, uh, you know, what is extremely see-through when light's behind it and what uh, what isn't. Uh, and then spec color, um, uh, which is, whoops, um, uh, which basically the color reflected. So for skin, I go with blue. Uh, you can see for, uh, for like metals, you have, um, uh, something like this, so like cloth would be like a, a gray, and for like silver it would be, uh, you know, like white, because it would be like the color that I'm reflecting. Um, 
Yeah, just to show you my scene, um, uh, I'm going this way, like one of the default uh, environments within Toolbag. But I usually uh, I turn it down quite a bit and just treat it like a, an ambient light, uh, and then go with a three-point uh, uh, rig uh, for my lights, which is really more of like a cinematic thing. Like it's not really uh, real time necessarily. It's like more what you do for uh, like in-game cinematics, where you can have like controlled lighting and and stuff like that. But uh, it's kind of cheating in some way. But I find it gives pretty good results. Um, yeah. Um, is there any other questions or anything? Anybody want to talk about something? <laughs> Nothing? No? <laughs> um, so, so, yeah. Um, I mean, using, like, uh, I mean, using Marmoset and using this uh, scale, I mean, it's kind of becoming more um, common practice for like uh, for studios. I mean, you can have like a difference between like Dota uh, uh, materials which are available in uh, in Marmoset, but uh, for this is like more like where studios like mine, like Insomniac and Irrational before it, are kind of going in in that direction. So I mean, they call it PBR. There's different uh, different ways of going about it. You can have uh, like your metalness scale. You can have spec gloss, and that's what we use at uh, Insomniac, so you have basically two uh, textures controlling your result versus um, defining what is metal and what isn't, and then like the differences uh, within that. Um, yeah, uh, I mean, I'm pretty sure uh, all of that is available in Marmoset. Uh, I usually go with uh, this setup for uh, like for gloss, then uh, uh, defining like the reflected spec color. Um, you find too, like using this, like uh, your ambient or your uh, albedo diffuse texture is a lot like lighter than you normally have. You don't have um, uh, like lighting information baked into it. Uh, you generally go like a little lighter to let um, let like the lighting, like the real time lighting, actually do its job, right? So anything like this in here would be more like wear and tear, like uh, uh, you know, showing dirt and grime and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, like very low, like, uh, ambient occlusion, very low, uh, uh, cavity maps. Um, yeah, you can see that here. It's like actually, uh, controlled separately. So I have like an AO map and you can have like cavity, um, that comes in like separately, which is common to in uh in uh engine so you'll uh, you know basically be able to control that on like a separate layer so it doesn't have to be like baked into uh like your diffuse texture um all the time so then that way it doesn't conflict with um real time lighting so if you had like a light you know shining down on top you don't have like your shadows conflicting with what you know the light would dictate so just being able to have that uh handled separately is uh is beneficial. I mean, it's definitely um, kind of the way that like things are going. It's like you're separating, you're like separating like what your maps do, and like kind of constructing it in the material more rather than like previously when you'd have like my diffuse has all of this stuff in it, and then like one solid spec value or something like that. You're kind of like splitting up um, control. Really, is what it is. Um, and uh like the like workflow we're kind of looking at now is is uh using like this kind of stuff but also incorporating um more like substance or like a unified like material library that you look at uh for this kind of stuff so if you had um like you know your silver we would just be looking at like one silver for the project and not necessarily um like i do a silver you do a silver and you know then you have to like manage all of them it's more of like a a universal like global uh thing uh which is a lot a lot better to uh, bug fix um and just a lot better to manage in general um, trying to think what else I can show you <laughs> anybody have any questions or anything? What's my favorite character I ever worked on uh well, it depends um 
on Bioshock, I got to do uh, uh, all the enemies. So, like, um, the way, like, the process worked was basically we were in such a time crunch, we didn't have time to concept. So I just basically got to match a bunch of stuff together and made them, right? So a lot of it was, like, creative control and uh, not really common in, like, AAA games, right? So, uh, I mean, I don't know if you've play played the game or not, but... Uh, Basically, like, all the, the fodder enemies, like, the gunners and stuff like that are just all made up, basically. And, uh, yeah, it's fun. And, like, you never get to do that. I mean, you get to do, like, you know, a hat here and there or, like, oh, I'll make up a jacket for some dude. But, like, to actually make the entire, the entire suite was kind of like a mini, like, art direction thing that I got to do. Uh, yeah. And, I mean, for um, In On Sunset, which is, like, my... Uh, my most previous one, I did a lot of the uh, the vanity, uh, and I'm a big like character customization nerd. So uh, being able to like build that system and do like a lot of the pieces for that was uh, was really cool. Um, the way that it was made, it wasn't really like you made an entire character though. So there's like a few items that are like I really like doing that pair of pants or something like that. You know what I mean? But uh, uh, but it wasn't really like whole characters. Yeah. Um, yeah, you see here I got like some DOF going on too, and uh, it's something I try to uh, add in my scenes, and uh, usually something that's overlooked, but like even something like a, like an ear, like the shape of an ear that like has no blurring to it can be like super distracting, even though it's this uh, like subtle thing that you'd never notice, but like you never have like a solid silhouette of a guy's head like in you know real life it edges aren't sharp like that you know and uh it's definitely something that we're doing in a more cinematic way and it's starting to become more uh real time on like ps4 and xbox one i mean you probably saw i don't know if anybody played like the order but uh they use that like heavily um it you know it helps draw focus but also you know mimics reality too so uh not everything's uh Super sharp and, and clear. Um, yeah, I don't know um, uh, if you guys are familiar with like setting up your lights. I'll do this here. I can show that off. But um, you can see like how much of a difference it makes. I'm just going to show this. Um, you can see that it's doing a lot of work for me, and I kind of rely on it quite a bit um, for the sky. And you can set like uh, you know just your lights normally, which um, I mean I'm not smart enough to really explain it, but basically like you're um, defining like your light sources based off an image. Um, this is the one that I usually go to, or uh, the Smash Windows one. Usually, like to go like darker, or, like higher contrast for my final, uh, final stuff. But um, uh, yeah, I usually just set up like a a three point light, which is like pretty standard. So I do usually like a warm color, cooler color, and then a strong uh, a strong backlight. Uh, it kind of helps. Uh, like sometimes people will cheat with like a, a rim light to do uh, to fake like your backlight, but uh, now it's kind of becoming a little more distracting because you end up having this like gloss over your entire character that uh, that isn't really like super accurate, right? So you usually have like a stronger uh, like stronger backlight is like more uh, more cinematic uh, and more like you know what you expect for uh, uh, like photography and like movies and stuff like that. But, uh, yeah, I think it's it for me. I have people have questions. I'm, uh, happy to talk, happy to chat, or, like, go over anything uh, in particular. Nothing? No one? People behind the TV? Nothing. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, even, like, on my current project, uh, like, Toolbag, um, 
is actually what I'm like using to like previs materials because I'm not a guy that understands really building like material graphs and like the deep knowledge of that, right? So uh for me, like being able to open up Marmoset and be like to my programmers and people like that, like I want this, like this is like the result that I want. Uh, it helps show it because I can be visual, which I am. That's my job. So uh, you know, being able to do that, uh, it just makes it easier. It makes it easier to prove what you want. You can have like a comparison shot too, right? So it, it goes beyond like just being a like a badass like model viewer. You know, I mean, it can be like a previs program and uh, and things like that. So it definitely has its place, and I mean, I use it like all the time. I and mean, as you know, like basically everything in my portfolio is rendered in it. But now it's like sneaking into my uh, my workflow too for that. 